Offbeat Sports Podcast. I would have been a tale of two seasons for the Boston Celtics. I probably aged about 10 years just from that series. I'd probably compare myself to like, you know, just a younger, smarter, more handsome, stronger Michael Jordan. Let's go Celtics. Go Patriots. These are these are guys who, when they when you give them a bowl of Cheerios in the morning, they finish every last drop of milk. Absolute uh, clown over here. I'm ready when you are, baby. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Offbeat Sports Podcast. As today, we are continuing our interview series called Offbeat University, where we interview Division One college athletes. Uh, today, we are joined by Matt Festa, former quarterback for the 2022 state champion Duxbury Dragons, and now quarterback for uh, the University of New Hampshire football team. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. So growing up in Duxbury, you were always known as and kind of saw yourself as a baseball player. Your dad played in the minor leagues. Um, you were good enough that you were recruited and actually committed to play for the University of Maryland's baseball team back in eighth grade. Um, but ultimately, you chose to go a different route uh, once you got to high school. So what was it about the game of football that made you want to switch collegiate sports and pass up on that opportunity at Maryland? Um, so, I've you know, I've always liked football better than baseball. But um, I didn't know I would ever have the chance to play in college, uh, especially because I got recruited for baseball uh, at a pretty young age. So I thought that was where I kind of had to go. Um, but then my junior year, a couple of schools started to uh, gain interest and reach out. And I realized that it was a possibility to um, play in college. So then I decided to make the switch because it's the sports that I've always liked the best. And um, it's kind of how it went. Yeah, so you've started for Duxbury since your freshman year, but you kind of put yourself on the radar your junior year, and especially this season where you went 12-0 and as a starter for Duxbury and racked up a ton of passing yards, 35 passing touchdowns, to go along with 14 rushing touchdowns. So what would you say is the main reason for your game being able to level up in these past two seasons? Um, well, I've had all kinds of really good coaching. Um, I work with uh, M2 Quarterback Academy, Mike McCarthy, who's a really good quarterback coach. Um, and then our head coach, Coach Landolf, he knows a lot about a lot about football. And um, I'm kind of obsessed with the game, so I did a bunch of – I always do a bunch of studying in my in the offseason and in my downtime. So I kind of just became obsessed with the, with the sport and kind of just, you know, uh, worked hard in the offseason and stuff and kind of paid off during the season. So going back to your junior year, you guys came up just short in the 2021 um, state championship game where you guys lost to Situate 14-13. Um, so what are some important lessons and some other things that you learned from that game and that season that helped you guys this season go undefeated and win the title game beating Grafton? Yeah, so that season, um, I mean, we had a really, really, really good team. Uh, Situ was also obviously a good team. Um, go. I mean, we we played them before in the season, and we actually beat them. So, uh, I mean, going into that game, everyone was super confident. But um, it kind of shows you that, like, no matter what the deal is, who you're playing, where you're playing, like, you have to play like to the best of your ability. And um, that game, there are definitely a bunch of missed opportunities to score, and uh, you know, things sometimes just don't go your way. So you can't really take those moments for uh, for granted, and you gotta take advantage of all all the opportunities you get. Yeah, so big part of college athletics now as you enter your collegiate career uh, is the NIL, which has come up in recent years. So do you plan to take advantage of the numerous opportunities that await college football players? And what are your thoughts on these new NIL opportunities? I mean, I personally have, haven't thought about that yet. I'm kind of more focused on just, like, getting adjusted to the whole college football thing and learning the offense and doing whatever I can to be – you know, a good teammate and a good part of the team because you know we got a starter right now who's done really well the past few years, and you got a couple more years of eligibility. So, uh, and the NIL thing is not really on my mind right now. It's more just you know learning the offense and kind of uh, being a part of the team. Yeah, so you had a pretty unique college recruiting process um, going into your senior season. You didn't have any. Division one scholarship offers. And even after that incredible stat line that Crosser mentioned um, and winning the state title, you didn't get any offers until the winter time. And yeah. 
So seeing that you had a preferred walk on from both UNH and Bryant, um, what made UNH kind of stick out to you and choose to continue your career there? Um, so I came to camp here uh, summer going into senior year, and I loved everything about the camp and the school. And uh, all the coaches are awesome here, especially like head coach uh, Rick Santos does a really good job. He's a high energy guy, which I love. And, um, you know, all the guys up here when I came up for my official visit, they made me feel like I was at home. Um, they like, they, they, did that. they did a really good job kind of just like letting me in and, uh, just kind of everyone has basically taken me under their wing, which is really, really nice. And I appreciate them for that. And, um, it just seemed like the right fit for me. Yeah. So looking ahead to this year, you'll be joining your former teammate, Brady Madigan in Durham and have some big game schedule, including against nationally ranked Delaware. And you'll be facing off against some of our former guests, uh, in the season opener at Stonehill. So what aspect of the season are you most excited about? And what are some goals you have for yourself in this team? Um, you know, I'm just most excited about being a part of uh, of our team. I you know last year we had a really good season. Um, you know, they had a made a good playoff run and just gonna be really cool to be a part of a, you know, division one football team that's uh historically been a very good team and uh had a lot of winning seasons. So I'm definitely most excited to just be on the field that game day and be a part of uh, what goes on here. Yeah, so uh, we got a few rapid-fire fun questions for you uh, to finish it up. Um, who's your NFL GOAT? Tom Brady. Good Absolutely. <laughs> Correct answer. Yeah. Uh, favorite sports movie? Uh, Miracle. Was your uh go, was your go to pregame hype song? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't even know honestly. Like last year, we had a we had an interesting uh pregame locker room playlist. Uh, it had a lot of Taylor Swift in it, and that kind of would get me going because the whole locker room would get fired up for some reason. Taylor Swift for the game. So right now, I'd probably have to say something by Taylor Swift. You could have one celebrity watch you play. Who would it be? Tom Brady. Without a doubt, definitely Tom Brady. Who's your favorite non-football athlete? Non-football athlete. Uh, Tiger Woods. And finally, you have one Patriots prediction for this season. Uh, hopefully they, uh, make the playoffs. All right. Well, that's all we got for you. Thank you, Matt, for taking the time to do this interview with us. We appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And best of luck in this upcoming season. Uh, thanks everyone for watching and listening. Be sure to check us out on Instagram at offbeat underscore sports and on TikTok at offbeat sports and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Call them all Texas.